What's up guys? My name is Joel. I'm a teacher here at Solex in the beautiful city of Chicago. And today I want to talk to you about a specific problem with grammar that is known as phrasal verbs. Now, phrasal verbs are something very common in English that you probably already know something about. A uh, phrasal verb is a verb that is made up of two words. First, a normal verb like turn, and then a preposition like up. When you add these two words together, it changes the meaning. So, for example, turn up means to make louder. When you turn up the volume on your stereo or your TV or something like that, or on your phone. Now, here I have it in the past tense, so I put the ed after the first verb. This does not change when it's in the past tense. So, it's pretty easy to use if you think about it like that. We turned up the music. Now, one thing I want to do is I want to find the subject, the verb, and what we call the direct object. And I'll explain that in one moment. So first we have the subject, which is we. We have the verb that has two parts. Turn and up. Just one verb. Two words, one verb. And this music is the object. It is the direct object. It receives the action. What is turned up? The music is turned up. Okay? So that's the easy way to use these phrasal verbs. But there's another way that we do it all the time. It's very, very, very common. We can also say, we turned the music up. Now, do you see what's different here? We have the subject, and the verb is separated. It's split. It's in two parts, turned and up. And the direct object is here. The music is in between. It is in the middle of the phrasal verb. Now, these sentences mean the exact same thing. No different at all. Now, there is one more rule where you have to do something special when you use pronouns, and we'll talk about that next. Okay, so the next part involves pronouns. So let's talk about what is a pronoun. A pronoun is a small word that replaces a noun. So for example, he, she, it, me, herself, all of these are pronouns. They talk about another noun, and they refer to something else, and they take the place of it. Now, when we have a pronoun and a phrasal verb, the pronoun must go in the middle of the phrasal verb. That might sound confusing. Let's look at an example. The music was too quiet. We could not hear the music. It was too quiet. We weren't having fun. We were trying to party. It was too quiet. So we turned up it. Now that is incorrect. That does not sound correct to anyone who speaks English. Why? Because here we have a pronoun. And the pronoun must go in the middle of the phrasal verb. So the correct way to say this is... So we turned it up. This is very important. It sounds very bad and it's usually incorrect, especially when writing. If you write a pronoun after the phrasal verb, it must go in the middle. So again, let's look at this. We have the, well, let's forget about this part of the sentence. We have the subject, you have the verb, here you have the object, and it is a pronoun. So it must go after the first part of the phrasal verb. And then finally you have the preposition part of the phrasal verb. Now, one way to practice this is to look up a lot of different phrasal verbs. They're everywhere, and they mean many different things, and they're very important. Look up a list of phrasal verbs, and then just try to make sentences using both normal nouns and pronouns. And remember, when you use a pronoun, like he, she, it, or me, something like that, then they must go 
in the middle of the phrasal verb. Cool. I hope that helps, guys. Uh, if you like this video, as always, please click the like button. If you want to see more grammar videos, vocabulary videos, culture videos, whatever, uh, subscribe to Solex, and we will show you more. Thanks, guys. Have a good day.